Hi everyone, thanks for joining this session. Today, me and my colleague Paul Yang we are going to talk about how to integrate Flink with Cloud Native ecosystem. A quick introduction to myself. My name is Yang Wang. I come from Alibaba and I have more than five years of experience and data at this field system. Now, recently, I'm um, focused on Flink on Kubernetes. Uh, an operation in production of large scale. This is today's agenda. First, I will quickly go through the introduction of Kubernetes. Second, I will tell you why Alibaba is trying to migrate the Flink workloads from Hadoop YAR to Kubernetes and how to do that. Next, I will share some challenges when we deploy Flink on Kubernetes in production. Uh, finally, my colleague will give some insight about scaling and follow the file conclusion. Okay, uh, let's come to the first part. Uh, so what is Kubernetes? Uh, this is a very simple definition I copied from the official website. Uh, let's pick up some key points here. Uh, the first is uh, resource management. Kubernetes is a resource management framework which could help us uh, to manage thousands of uh, machines. Then you can run your distributed jobs on the Kubernetes cluster. The second is uh, container orchestration. All the workloads on uh, our jobs running on Kubernetes is containerized. Uh, the third is uh, operation automation. Uh, Kubernetes provides a simple declarative API uh, then you could uh, just write a simple YAML file, then apply it. Uh, your 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 Kubernetes of, uh, application uh, will be launched. Uh, all the operation, uh, all the uh, creating resource and other operation will be uh, will be done by Kubernetes automatically. Uh, the number four is uh, cloud native. Uh, all the uh, all the cloud vendors could provide out box uh, out of the box uh, Kubernetes cluster then it is very easy to set up a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, so what kind of workloads we could run on Kubernetes? Uh, in the very beginning, uh, we are running a web website or the mobile backend service uh, on the Kubernetes. They are all stateless service. Uh, when the port uh, failed, we just need to launch them again. Uh, not after too long, uh, deployment is become uh, become very popular, and uh, the engineers start to running uh, deployment workloads on such as TensorFlow on the Kubernetes. Uh, at the same time, some companies are trying to deploy the storage uh, on the Kubernetes. Uh, for example, uh, the uh, MySQL uh, database uh, or on the message queue on Kafka and the Elasticsearch. Uh, the big data seems to be the last one to join the family, uh, uh, include, include, uh, including uh, Spark and Flink. Uh, however, I think it is a very important signal uh, because uh, we always believe that the big data workloads uh, are more appreciated to run on Hadoop clusters. Now, uh, many companies are starting to uh, run um, big data workloads on Kubernetes. Uh, in Alibaba, uh, we are just in the uh, same situation. Uh, in the uh, very beginning, uh, the Alibaba e commercial website and the mobile um, backend service uh, has been deployed on Kubernetes. Uh, it is uh, our uh, internal Kubernetes version. Mm. Uh, the um, data storage team, they are trying to deploy the, uh, the storage service on the Kubernetes too. Uh, uh, we are from the big data team and uh, we have uh, started to uh, migrate to the Kubernetes from YAR uh, from, um, from uh, last year. So, uh, 
why uh, Alibaba is trying to migrate uh, Flink workloads from Hadoop ER to Kubernetes cluster. Uh, first, uh, let's have a look uh, uh, what is the uh, current situation or, uh, in Alibaba uh, for the Flink on ER. Uh, about two years ago, all the Flink jobs in Alibaba are running on Hadoop ER. Uh, internally, we have more than 10,000 Flink applications running on different ER clusters with 10,000 nodes uh, on the public cloud. Uh, we also have more than 10, uh, more than 100 customers are using the real-time computer service. We are managing a big uh, shared cluster and provide managed Flink service. However, uh, because of uh, security reasons, uh, we could not support uh, user defined function and uh, user just submission in the public cloud uh, for the shared cluster. Also, uh, another, limi uh, another limitation is uh, user could uh, connect, cannot connect to the, uh, their own uh, storage service in their VPC since we do not have a disk isolation. When some jobs flush many data to the local disk, the node manager will uh, turns into unhealthy, and all the job, uh, all the jobs uh, running, all the jobs uh, have a content running on the same node manager. We we'll have to favor. I think uh, it is uh, not reasonable uh, for mountain tennis support. Uh, on the right, uh, it is uh, Yamaha cluster. Yamaha Yama cluster is running in the user VPC network. User is uh, responsible for managing the clusters. And we could pro uh, we provide some tools, uh, for example, cluster manager uh, to help uh, to help them uh, with uh, managing uh, upgrading. Uh, um, so why we choose to uh, uh, migrate uh, from Hadoop to Kubernetes? I see at least we have uh, forty uh, reasons. Um, the first one is a uh, container environment. Uh, it is very easy to set up, uh, clean up, and reproducible. Imagine that uh, you should uh, imagine that uh, if you uh, if you uh, have a, a command if you have a command running in the local, then uh, uh, then uh, exact uh, same uh, event will be uh, created in the cluster if you if you run the same command. Uh, the number two is uh, multiple tennis. Uh, Docker container uh, could, uh, Kubernetes could provide better resource or network isolation. Also, it could provide better uh, security. Uh, benefit from the uh, multi tennis and isolation, we could run in mixed workloads uh, in our same Kubernetes cluster. For example, we could run online web service, the machine learning workloads. The search engine uh, and there's a big data workloads in a same cluster, so uh, we could get a better uh, resource uh, utilization. The last one is we could leverage the rich Kubernetes evolving uh, ecosystem. Uh, most of most of them are open source, and we could uh, use them uh, directly. Um, so uh, this is how. Uh, we are, uh, this, is, uh, this is our new uh, architecture for Flink on Kubernetes. Uh, and he, uh, it is very similar uh, to uh, the Anya architecture. Uh, we could provide a uh, serverless Flink and a self-managed cluster. The, the, the improvement is uh, now we could provide, uh, we could support a user UDF and uh, uh, just submission in the public cloud benefit from the uh, better isolation. Also, uh, we have the exact same architecture in the service Flink and the self-managed cluster. We have uh, now, uh, we are using Kubernetes operators to, uh, to manage the uh, Flink cluster. All the all other service on uh, the components are also running in, uh, are also developed as a Kubernetes uh, operator that are all running on the Kubernetes cluster. We will not have bare uh, processes running in, in the local 
Bear Machines. So uh, now we can know why we choose to migrate uh, from um, hardware to Kubernetes. Uh, how to do that? Uh, the easiest way is to uh, stand on cluster on Kubernetes. Uh, first, uh, uh, it is very simple and we do not need to uh, change uh, clean code. We just need to apply some uh, YAMLs. Uh, then the Kubernetes will help us to uh, launch the job manager deployment and some task managers. When the task manager reaches to the job manager, uh, or M uh, an MP, uh, when it's a uh, Flink, uh, Flink session will be ready, you could use Flink client to submit a job to the existing uh, Flink cluster. Please remember that uh, the step four is uh, necessary in job application cluster. Uh, the GR build, since we have the GR build in the image, and uh, uh, when the discharge is launched, uh, the job will be recovered automatically. Uh, you may still believe that uh, you may still think that uh, it is too difficult for me because I have to uh, apply uh, so many AMOs. Uh, do I have an easy way? Yes, uh, it is a Kubernetes operator. Uh, Kubernetes operator is very easy to use and it could help us to uh, manage multiple of the clusters. Uh, for for a specific job, it is uh, it is uh, it, it could help us to manage the Whole life cycle. For example, uh, when we update the Flink configuration and restart the Flink cluster, uh, we uh, upgrade the user and dependencies of Flink versions. Uh, Operators could help us to trigger a same point and then delete the Flink cluster and uh, create a new one. Again, okay. it could uh, recover from the latest uh, latest chain point or same point and and keeps running. Each Flink application uh, is a single drop. It is uh, it, it could provide uh, better isolation. Uh, so, uh, what uh, what limitations uh, do we still have? Uh, the first is uh, Flink is not aware of Kubernetes cluster. We are using Kubernetes control or operators to uh, apply some YAMLs to launch the job manager or task manager. But Flink is not is not aware uh, the cluster uh, the Flink cluster is running on Kubernetes. Uh, the second is uh, sta static resource allocation. We have to we have to use uh, external tools to launch the task manager. Flink do not have have the ability to uh, allocate the task manager port dynamically. Uh, the third is. Uh, the users have to require uh, require some upfront knowledge about containers operators, uh, but I think uh, some Flink users uh, they, they they are more like to uh, use Flink run or Flink run application to submit job. The last one is it is not convenient for the batch job and uh, multiple jobs in a station because. Uh, the job manager, uh, the the Kubernetes, the Flink resource manager could not allocate a port uh, from Kubernetes automatically on demand. So uh, let's take a look at the native integration. Uh, what does uh, what do the native mean? Uh, I think here uh, here the native means uh, we have an, an embedded uh, Kubernetes cluster in Flink client uh, and uh, the mm, Job manager, so Flink client uh, could directly talk to Kubernetes API server uh, to uh, tell him to create the job manager deployment. When the job manager deployment launched, uh, and uh, the user could uh, submit the job uh, through the expose the service. When the job is submitted, uh, a job master is spawned. And it and it allocated resource from the Kubernetes resource manager. The resource manager will allocate task manager port from Kubernetes API server on demand. When the task manager port is launched, it registers to the Flink master resource manager, and then the job master will then the job master will deploy the task and makes jobs running. Uh, 
of course, we still, uh, of course, we will have a Flink Kubernetes operator for the native mode. Uh, it is uh, very similar to the standalone Kubernetes uh, operator. Uh, the only difference is uh, the operator is in Java implemented, and we we are using the Fabric Eight uh, Kubernetes client. The native Kubernetes operator will help us to create uh, ingress the job manager deployment and all other resources. The users uh, just need to apply a custom resource YAML. It is, I think it is more friendly to the uh, Kubernetes users or Kubernetes expert, but he's not uh, familiar with Flink. Uh, so far, we have no uh, why we, uh, we are, we are mirroring uh, Flink workloads from YAR to Kubernetes. And how to do that? Uh, then I will share some um, challenges uh, in the pro production when we try to deploy Flink on Kubernetes. Uh, the first uh, the first challenge is cloud native problem platform. Uh, I think uh, if we want if we want to deploy Flink on Kubernetes. We uh, we just we at least we have two uh we have at least we we must have um, fourteen components. The first is uh APP manager. It is very similar to Kubernetes operator and uh, uh, it could provide a uh, web UI help us to uh, manage the Flink clusters. We could uh, use uh, SQL uh, and the uh, users to submit a Flink job. Also, it could help us to upgrade the free job. If you want to uh, upgrade the Lucia, you just need to upload and uh, and uh, click the upgrade button. Uh, all uh, all other operations will be done the API manager automatically internally. Uh, the second is uh, auto scaling service. Uh, when we want to deploy free class on quantities, uh, we may have. Um, such uh, such following questions. The first is uh, how many task managers do I need? Uh, how many slots uh, I have to set for per TM? Uh, how to set the parallelism for job? It is just for a single a single job. Uh, imagine that you have more than thousand of jobs to tune. Uh, it will be a disaster. Auto scaling service could help us to do this. It will start the drop and keeps monitoring the delay, the latency, DC count, and DC counts, and other metrics. Uh, and the restart drop with new par par uh, parameters uh, until it is stable. Uh, Generally, state backend is a commercial uh, uh, commercial uh, plugin for state backend. It's pure Java implemented with better performance than RocksDB. For metrics and logs, we do not have uh, special requirements. We are using log 4 j to append to directly to write the logs to the re to remote storage for Flink, and uh, we are using Prometheus uh, Prometheus for the metric storage and Grafana for the view. Uh, the second challenge is uh, high high availability. High availability is a very basic requirement in production. It helps to eliminate the single point of failure for Flink clusters. For Flink uh, high availability uh, configuration, it is necessary to have more than one job manager in the cluster, known as uh, active and start, uh, standby job managers. Uh, so how the uh, Flink, has, uh, Flink has provided to keep uh, high availability service uh, uh, it, it has been used in, in production by many uh, companies. Uh, however, uh, when we want to deploy Flink on Kubernetes cluster, we still have to manage a uh, locable cluster. Uh, it, take, it takes uh, additional cost for us. So uh, at the same time, Kubernetes has provided some uh, little election API and config map for the meta storage. So uh, we, I think, uh, and it will be better if we if we have a native Kubernetes high availability. So how the high availability works? Uh, first, uh, uh, step, uh, first uh, we start multiple job managers. They are all try to contain the log. Uh, when when a specific job manager uh, succeed, 
uh, it is elected as an uh, active leader. All other uh, domains become standby and tries to uh, contender uh, and try uh, try uh, tries to continue continuously. The active uh, all the leader uh, domain leader will periodically uh, renew the token to keep the leadership. The task manager will retrieve the domain leader address from the config map and then register them to the uh, active domain job manager. Uh, we are directly using the uh, config map for the uh, meta store, for example, the Dropbox store, the Chainbone store. Uh, please uh, remember that uh, only the meta is stored in the config map. The real uh, data is stored in the distributed system, uh, such as uh, HDFS, S3. Uh, the next, uh, the next uh, challenge is network performance. Uh, the network architecture in Polynesia is very uh, different from YAR. Since the YAR do not have the network virtualization and isolation, all the containers are running in the host machine network. For Kubernetes, it provides an overlay network by default. Each port will have their own IP address. So in the small deployment and uh, we, uh, we, are, we, we could use the Flannel network backend. However, uh, in our internal use case, we found that for some payment network applications, the performance of Flannel is about 10% lower than the YAR or standard deployment. So think job frankly, uh, filled with connection, uh, receive IP or some other uh, network problems. So we enable the host network for the job manager and task managers. Uh, in such case, we should use a random port or port range for the RPC REST uh, blob ports. And the native uh, Kubernetes high ability could help a lot in such case for the leader retriever. However, uh, in the current environment, since we need to provide the since we need to provide isolation for different tenants, the host network is not reasonable. Fortunately, uh, all the cloud vendors, cloud vendors could provide the, their own CI plugin. Using the CI plugin allows Kubernetes ports to have the same uh, IP address uh, in the in their in the user VPC network. The CI plugin is, is responsible for attaching the elastic network interface and allocating the IP address in VPC, it could provide the same performance as host network with uh, excellent isolation. Uh, the number of mounted tenants, uh, uh, support. Uh, this is a maintenance architecture. We have a super master uh, on the bottom. Uh, on the top of the super master, uh, is on, the, on top of the Supermaster Kubernetes cluster, we provide a different uh, uh, virtual cluster for different users. Each virtual cluster will have dedicated API server, ATCD, and CodeDNS. So uh, even even some users are keeping uh, are, uh, are keeping to list ports, uh, list large ports. It will not affect users. Also, we could enable the security uh, functionality, uh, for example, the service account or the secret. Uh, for the data planes, uh, we are using VPC and uh, EI for the network isolation, uh, just like we have um, we have seen uh, in the last page. Uh, uh, we are using Kata container for the resource isolation. Kata container is uh, Cloud container could provide stronger isolation and then the Docker container. Uh, it is, uh, it is uh, secure as a virtual machine, but uh, fast as a container. Uh, you can find more information uh, on the website. Uh, the last one is uh, Elastic Cloud Disk. We use uh, each port will, will have uh, their own e Elastic Cloud Disk. Uh, it, could provide, uh, it could provide better isolation between different ports for the disk, uh, or disk uh, uh, isolation. Uh, the next challenge is scaling. My colleague uh, Tao Yang will give more introduction about it. Welcome. Thank you, Yang. Hello, hello, everyone. 
Some of our clusters are actually uh, heterogeneous, so that they may contain devices with different computational or network capabilities. Thus, we have higher requirements on node aware schedule. Flink is a unified data processing for both batch and streaming, and our clusters are actually serving for mixed workloads and are expected to manage thousands of nodes later. So, higher throughput is the most important performance target. Last but not least, observability helps users understand the internals of complex systems so that is useful for figuring out the scheduling problem or analyzing performance bottleneck. Overall, Kubernetes default scheduler cannot tackle these challenges. It was built for normal services. When it comes to such a complex scenario, it just doesn't work. So here comes our question. How can we tackle those challenges for Flink? Then in the next section, I will introduce Unicorn and how we optimize scheduling with Unicorn. So what is Unicorn? It's a lightweight and standalone resource scheduler for Kubernetes. It's focused on building the scheduling capabilities to empower big data on Kubernetes. And it's very easy to use and it can coexist with default scheduler. Now let's take a look at multi-tenant and workloads management with Unicom. The brown flow shows how to manage a tenant resource. Cluster admin can manage a tenant resource via a cluster management platform, which will update a config map that keeps the configurations for Unicom. Then scheduler is notified and will update the internal state accordingly. The green flow shows how to schedule calls for the workloads. Talents can run workloads via workloads management platform, which will ask API server to create pods. The scheduler name of pods will be mutated by webhook. Then scheduler will schedule for pods with considering talents or workloads ordering according to the internal state. Unicorn uses queues with guaranteed results and maximum results to represent tenants. Guaranteed results means tenant can get, get the results at any time and also can be seen as the fairness factor between tenants. Max results refers to the resource quota. Resource sharing can help some tenants to use elastic results comes from idle resource pool. Meanwhile, the elastic results is not guaranteed since it can be taken away when the idle resource pool is exhausted. Resource fairness besides tenants or workloads ordering will help to avoid starting some tenants or workloads. Priority aware scheduling besides workloads ordering and make, make them well organized, by which the scheduler can guarantee that important workloads can be scheduled before others and the primed resources from less important running workloads, if necessary. 
Then let's talk about you know, the rest schedule. Some of our clusters have heterogeneous environment with SCAS computing resource like GPU, FPGA, or SCAS network resources such as ENI. Here comes a big challenge. How to schedule for mixed workloads with high throughput while the new sorting is the most time consuming part? We have, we have designed a flexible mechanism to meet requirements in complex environment. The core is node sorting algorithm. It has an incremental implementation with a cache to keep a list of sorting the nodes. Node evaluator can give the static and the dynamic scores. Only the static scores are taken into account for the cache. The green flow shows key actions of incremental implementation of node sorting algorithm for a common request. Algorithm will directly send sorted nodes from the cache to the scheduler. But for a request with SCAS results, Mike G will create a dynamic scores for nodes with SCAS results and rearrange them. Generally, we can use flexible configurations to customize the node array scheduling for different uh, general implementation has improved a lot on the scheduling performance. In Unicom, we have done lots of optimizations to improve the performance as requests management, incremental node sorting algorithm and so on. We have built a performance testing environment based on Kubmark, which is a performance testing tool and allows users to run tests on simulated cluster. The test environment has a Kubmark master and a real Gladys cluster with one master and 18 nodes. Kubmark script can set up the Hono nodes as pods on the real cluster and let them talk to the Kubernetes API server. Following charts reveal how many seconds 20,000 pods can be scheduled on to 2,000 or 4,000 nodes with Unicorn and the default scheduler. The red line represents for Unicorn and the green line represents for the default scheduler. Roughly, we can get a four times better performance comparing to the default scheduler. Observability is very essential to users, which can make them better understand workloads, figure out why workloads fail or start slowly, and discover underlying problems or bottleneck. Causes may be raised by different components. We leverage open tracing API and the yoga implementation to build a trace architecture as the top picture shown to enhance the observability. There are two key trace scopes, including pod life cycle and the scattering cycle. And the following picture shows the traces of those two scopes. We can not only track key transitions and internal details for any single workload, but also can figure out underlying problem of or bottleneck while analyzing the traces. Then let's talk about the conclusion and some, some of the roadmap. We have done a lot of works to continuously improve the experience of integrating Flink with cloud native ecosystem. And uh, most of them has been contributed upstream to the community. For Flink, both session and the application mode with native in integration have been supported in 1.11 version. Some remaining details and the native high availability are planned in version 1.12. And we have open source a POC version of native Flink operator, which is a control plan for running Flink native application on Kubernetes. 
Moreover, we are expecting to support external shopper service on Kubernetes, which is included in Flip 31 to enhance the rate of resource utilization. For scheduling optimizations with Unicorn, priority aware scheduling is planned in version 0 0.10. Node aware scheduling and observabilities are in progress. Then later, we will pay more attention on auto scaling, resource utilization, and so on. That's all. Thank you so much for your interest and attention. Okay. Any questions? Thank you. Okay, that's all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.